Nope, those two don't match. Nope, those two don't match. She's on her way to interrogation now. That's all I have to say for now. Hey, looking for a hint? Hey, glad to help. Check your case file for a hint.
Nope, those two don't match. Nope, those two don't match. Nope, those two don't match. Hey, looking for a hint? Hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now. Dude, that's all you get now. Not the right tool for this. Too bad it's only a partial print. Still, pardon the pun, we may get a match. Nope, those two don't match. Nope, those two don't match. Nope, those two don't match. Good job, partner. What's cooking? Hey, Gris. Cooking up a storm in here. My partner just confirmed the match matches our current holding cell celebrity, Ed. So there's evidence of Ed Danville, both inside and outside of the cab. 
Coincidence? Could be. I've seen stranger things happen. And we've got a few other leads. So what exactly did Ed light up with that match? We'll find out. First of all, we'll see if he smokes. And I don't even care what. Later, Chris. Nope, those two don't match. He's on his way to interrogation now. Who and where? Slow down, my brother. Take a step back before you go blaming that on me. I took a cab a couple of days ago, Saturday, I think. But I didn't ask the guy his name. Maybe it's your guy, maybe it ain't. We found a used match with your print on it in the cab. So maybe it is the cabbie who got burned. But so what? I smoke them when I got them. But what's that mean in the great scheme? Now that is harsh. I do odd jobs for cash. I can afford the occasional ride. Anyway, those lesbos, pardon my French, they were climbing all over each other. Not in a good way. Liz, she was all pissed off at Deb for God knows what and raving on about needing a cleansing. Next thing, Liz is lighting some pagan ritual fire that got way the hell out of hand and damn near burned the neighbor's fence down. Anyway, I tried to help put the thing out and for my trouble got Liz climbing all over my ass. Also not in a good way. She said, get out, get the hell out of here, all freaked out. And man, I got... This cab was on the corner, and I just grabbed it and told the cabbie, stop at the nearest bar. The random room, it's called. Oh, round four, maybe five. Closer to five, I think. When do you think? When Miss Pyromaniac 1999's fire got out of control. The broad is brutal, man. She is out there. 
I can spare a few for the cause. Hey, like I said, you don't have to have a 9 to 5 to be a good citizen. But if you find burn patches, remember, I was playing Citizen's Fire Brigade for that hot les. No, that's everything. So, when do I check out of that holding cell and get back to my windmill, my brother? We'll get back to you. Well, Ed was definitely one of the two to tango. Hey, Gris, check this out. Looks like Liz and Ed generated some heat in the old fire temple. The fire goddess consummated with Mr. Free as the wind. An elemental attraction, so the evidence says. Wonder who initiated it. Well, wouldn't you say that air stokes fire, Nick? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Let's go, partner. So Liz plays with fire, huh? Bring her in and apply a little heat. Let her feel the burn. You have a record of fire-related misdemeanors and are currently building something called a fire temple, plus your fingerprint and turpentine were found at the scene of a murder by immolation. Combustible stuff, Liz. For you, this is all about science, right? Reading the evidence. But you need to look through my artist's eyes to understand that I couldn't have done this. To me, fire is cleansing, a ritual of rebirth, phoenix from ashes. Would I waste something so precious on a sack of human excrement like Bob? Oh, I don't know. Sacks of human excrement rate high on my list of things needing cleansing. You knew Bob was a gay basher and was harassing Deborah. You were taking steps to protect your lover. You hailed Bob's cab for a ride. After a while, had him pull over, doused him with turpentine, and did a little cleansing on him. No. I confronted him about his harassment, yes, but he's the one who got violent. He threw me out of his cab. Must have been drunk out of his mind. Guys, get serious. We're artists, gentle people. We don't destroy, we create. Yeah, right with fire. Didn't I say six? No, wait. We drove for a while, maybe closer to 6.30. So when did things first uh, heat up between you and Ed, Liz? Oh, well, that's just nonsense. You know my orientation. DNA doesn't lie, Liz. We found a used condom used by Ed and you. Fire temple gate swing both ways. I think you talked your new lover into helping you do more than just create art. Who knows? Maybe he gets a kick out of setting fires, too. Anyway, you brought the turpentine and the matches, and Ed doused Bob with the turpentine and lit the fire. And you're supposed to be a scientist? You're adding two and two and getting 48. Okay, okay, so Ed and I got hot and heavy one night. Too many stars and too much wine and... Deborah caught us at it, and she didn't know that I was by, and she just went off the deep end. 
I've been struggling to put the pieces back together ever since. Which is why I kicked Mr. Freeborn out on his neo-hippie ass, okay? Ed's a user. A manipulative jerk who preaches freedom and then does everything he can to control you. I'm on to him now, but even when I wasn't, I wouldn't commit... commit murder. My god, I'm an artist, not an arsonist. I've said all I'm going to say for now. He's on his way to interrogation now. What happened? Didn't work out for you? What makes you think I was with that lesbo? Huh? A little condom told us. So, since when is trying for a conversion get you a flag on the play? So, we did the nasty ad in the artsy temple. So what? Don't tell me sex is illegal in Sin City now. No, but setting cab drivers on fire can get you pulled over. Maybe Liz solicited your help to protect Deborah from a known gay basher. Hey, Deborah's a major pain in the ass bone, you dig? So an old flame of hers gives her some grief. Why should I give a crap? So an old flame of hers goes up in smoke. That, too, I could give a damn about. And you can stir in Liz the Les... more trouble than she's worth. Or otherwise, why would I be sleeping in the windmill suite? Because Deborah caught you bumping uglies with her one and only? Just a guess. They ripped while you were getting away. Or should I say, trying to. Plus, we have your print on the turpentine can. Also on the match used to give the cabbie a light. You got wax in your ears, dude? I already explained all this. I had a smoke in the cab earlier. I was around turpentine all the time helping Liz with the temple. Get it? As for tearing my pants, thinking back, that must have happened when I went out to that foundry for a gander at those sculptures. Squeeze through the fence to get a better look. Must have happened then. I told you before, I was spreading flyers for the fire goddesses, trying to recruit the young and confused for their tribe. You're spreading something right now, but let's move on. Could be you're looking at the only innocent party in this fire fest. Talk to those crazy bitches who threw me out. One obsessed with purifying by fire, the other the object of your dead cabbie's infections. Last I saw him, Liz was begging to get back in Deborah's good graces, saying she'd do anything for Deb if she took her back. Anything. And then poof, one cabbie turned crispy critter. Well, thanks for your sensitive insights. That's it for now. I already gave it to Nick. Meet him out at the miniature golf course. Oh, and Ed's story about taking a cab to the bar on Saturday? Didn't check out. Good thinking, nailing him on the specifics during questioning. Cab company has no record of a fare there on that day. Hey, partner. I checked out Ed's bedroll in the windmill. Nothing useful in it. If you had any other clothes, he got rid of them. Appears Ed didn't like having a hole in the middle of his suite. Stuff something in there. Man, what are you, the club pro? Didn't hear the ball come out the other end, though, so let's take a look. I 
I can see something stuffed in there. One more ball ought to do the trick. Hole in one, or maybe one more in the hole. If they had MVPs in miniature golf, you'd be it, Slick. That's a tightly rolled, rubber-banded wad of money that was stuffed down there in Ed's little bank. This may answer the question of why the cabbie had no money on him, or in his vehicle. He's on his way to interrogation now. Dude, that's all you get now. This puts Ed at the crime scene. Of course, he already told us he was there distributing flyers. He's on his way to interrogation now. Dude, that's all you get now. She's on her way to interrogation now. What relationship? He was just this freak passing through who stopped long enough to help us with our art project and, you know, put up flyers and stuff. So you didn't know things had gotten hot and heavy between them? Behind your back? You make it sound like, like, like an affair. All it was was a night where things got out of hand is all. Liz and that, that freak got together one time. One time. He got her drunk and laid a smooth line on her and, and, anyway, that happened Saturday night. And I saw them together. And Liz and me, we had this big knockdown drag out. Not physical, just verbal, but a big fight, okay? And she promised me it was just this one time. It would never, ever happen again. She went and set this bonfire to show the fling was flung and she would cleanse herself and our space of the creep. And, like I said, she was kind of drunk. Fire about got out of control. Anyway, Ed crawls out of his hole somewhere and tries to pitch in. With stopping the fire, Liz starts screaming at him and he books it. Never came back. She was crying and I was crying. Not that any of this is any of your business. Well, we got the fire out at least. Neighbor's fence a little worse for the wear. That's all I have to say for now. She's on her way to interrogation now. I've said all I'm going to say for now.
There's more to do with this evidence before we can process it. Ah, our dirty money was drenched in turpentine, just like the cabbie. The hair with the money belonged to our Vic. Of course, he was bald, so I don't even want to know where this hair came from. Better golf score than I've seen in a while. I think we should have another chat with Freeborn Edsel, don't you? Funny strange or funny hysterical? Hysterically strange. My partner here scored a hole in one with two balls. You lost me at hello. Um, oh. You mean my hidey hole? Well, sure. No problem, my brothers. I can explain that. No, let me. After Liz tossed you out, you had no place to stay and no money. So you came back Tuesday night, you found your hostess is gone, and you helped yourself to 15 bucks. Oh, and for warmth on a cool Vegas night, you stole Deborah's poncho. I don't know what you've been smoking, Captain Brass, but it can't be legal. You knew that poncho and the record of harassment would implicate Deborah in Bob's burning. And you were pretty pissed off at the cab driver anyway for just generally being a small-minded jerk. You know, a free spirit like you. You took the turpentine, too. Evidence pre-selected to put the blame on the fire goddesses. Settling a grudge or two, even as you built your bankroll from nothing to something. It was easy to find Bob's cab to hail. Hell, he kept driving up and down in front of Deborah's. You told the cabbie to take you to the foundry yard. When you got there, you doused him with turpentine and threatened to set him on fire if he didn't give up his cash. He gave you the money, but you lit him up anyway. The flash fire singed your hairs and the poncho. Once out of the cab, you ditched the turpentine can and slid through the fence. In a hurry to get away, you tore your jeans. Then you ditched your clothes and shoes and headed back to Deborah's where you planted the poncho in the temple. So you got his money, but you really wanted to get even with the women, and maybe with Bob himself. You got it wrong. I doused the guy, okay, and he handed over his money, but I didn't want it. I was just trying to scare him out of being such a bastard to Deborah, right? I lit a match, but I was just trying to scare him. He went for my hand and the match dropped and we both got burned. And you just grabbed the money to save it from the flames. Be cool! It could have happened that way, right? 
And if it didn't, if I did do it the way you say, then all I really did was rid this beautiful planet of one ugly bigot. And you should give me a medal, not put my ass away. Maybe I was sticking up for those fire goddesses and their lifestyle. And mine. All we really wanted to do was live free, to spread the love. And the bigots of the world, the bobs of the world, they're the ones that deserve to get burned. You said it yourself, Mr. Freeborn. You and Bob both got burned. And where you're going, you'll find a lot of people living alternative lifestyles, including white supremacists like the late cab driver. You'll have plenty of opportunity to spread the love. Well, that's one dude I don't mind roasting in the can. All this talk of heat, though, I'm ready for a soda. You want one? I'll meet you in the conference room right after Grissom gives you his eval. All right, here's your evaluation. For evidence, you found everything there was to find. For hints, you didn't need many at all. And at the end of the day, you followed the evidence to a clear conclusion. Can't argue with that. Good work. You did very well, though as I noted, there's still some room to improve. I'm giving you an above average grade. And by the way, thank you for all the new specimens you found for my collection. Hey, I understand you came through with flying colors on that last case. Can't guarantee you anything so flashy, but we do have a victim. Assault and battery, en route to the hospital.